Hello, I'm Gary Stearman. Welcome to another edition of Prophecy in the News. Today's guest, author, lecturer, publisher, Tom Horn. Stay with us. Well, it's always a pleasure to welcome Tom Horn back to Prophecy in the News. Hi, Tom. Hi, Gary. Thanks for having me on again. It's, it's going to be good. We're going to be talking about several things today, but let's begin with the book. Beast Tech is the name of it. You collaborated with uh, Terry Cook on this book. And Tom, there's something very serious that is a, a very serious subject is being presented here in terms of uh, how it might change all of our lives. I know when you write, when you speak, I think it's always with a sense that we're on the edge of something very big happening. Uh, it's not our imagination. Things really are changing. And the things that are mentioned in Beast Tech are kind of frightening. Well, and of course, Terry Cook himself, you know, he was a former California police officer. He was an investigator, a fraud investigator. Uh, and uh, so he was a great guy to get hooked up with because his formal training, you know, teaches him how to uh, pursue the evidence, pursue the information, make a case for or against it. Uh, and uh, me, of course, I'm just a guy who is interested in prophecy, but I'm also interested in civil liberties. I always have yeah. been. And of course, you know, Terry, me, and other thoughtful Americans have been concerned lately when you see like the NSA uh, encroachments in and against our civil liberties and making the argument that they ought to have the right uh, without a court order to be able to listen to our conversations and monitor our conversations. And so you have that kind of uh, encroachment through the use of technology, I, uh, you know, the, the title Beast Tech, which implies there will be technology that also will be used by an end time system. Um, but then just this week, you have the Department of Homeland Security saying that they're now going to begin pushing the Real ID Act. You know, this was all the way oh back yeah. to 2005. It was enacted. But now they're going to require all of the states to meet some federalized standard uh, for driver's license, which would, many believe, become kind of a de facto national ID. But it's also going to include some kind of biometric signature. So now we're talking about what? An I scan retinal scan or a, a fingerprint or something like that yeah and they're now talking about uh, hemispheric compatibility meaning your driver's license would be good in the entire western hemisphere that would be canada united states mexico south america uh a one well it let, uh, and my reaction to that was well, if it's hemisphere compatible it's globally compatible sure. so that's that's what's coming Right. Well, actually, the, you know, the, the whole idea that you're going to have an international kind of identification system, it doesn't take much of a student of Bible prophecy to right. have red flags going up, right? Yeah. But it definitely, and, and in a very humanistic sense, you can almost see the need for it, uh, that eventually that is going to be the kind of technology uh, that's going to develop. In our government right now, you have uh, stalled immigration reform. But now that they've, you know, settled some of their budget issues, Obama is saying that we're going to get back on immigration reform. But some of the versions of immigration reform, some people fear, have in it, uh, again, a national form of identification that would include biometrics. And it would, again, in a very humanistic sense, be required because you somehow need to be able to qualify who can enter the country and work and hold down jobs and own real estate and whatever legally against those who can't. Let's talk about biometrics. You use that term, <clears throat> and we all watch uh, television from time to time. We watch the de detective shows, maybe, and and what has become big in the in the detective shows is get a DNA sample. In other words, you go to a crime scene, if somebody has touched something, or if uh, some bodily fluid or or per perspiration has touched something, presto, they've got your DNA and they can identify you as an individual by name anywhere you are on planet Earth. And that, that's one aspect of biometrics, but another aspect of biometrics is control of the population. Right. And let's go into a, a, some of the darker parts of that. Well, you know, Gary, uh, for instance, coming to market this year, 2014, 
is the new flexible tattoos that you've seen being illustrated. Now, you were one of the first guys to talk about this several years ago. You did a show yeah. talking about the invention of these flexible tattoos. But now they're becoming very sophisticated. One of the ones that's out there is called MC10 that everybody's talking about right now. MC stands for Microsoft Corporation. So you have very giant corporations that are investing in this technology. It appears very simple. You put this, it's a flexible circuitry is what it is. It goes on your arm or the, your hand or wherever they're going to eventually put this. And, um, and it is powered by the heat from your body. Um, if people want to go to the website for that book, beast-technology.com, there's videos over there where you can see this technology being illustrated. And in one of them, you'll see the former director of DARPA, a woman by the name of Regina Dugan. And she's got one on her arm. And she's talking about how this thing's wonderful. Everybody's going to want it. It gives you superpowers, she says, because now as you walk into a federal building, you don't need to present any kind of identification. This thing is interacting wirelessly with their systems. When you walk through that door, you're on the screen. It knows who you are. It's already authenticated you. It's partly using biometric uh, retinal scans or, again, fingerprints or, or blood samples or whatever's been taken in the past. Wow. Well, the same thing, let's say uh, Regina Dugan is in a car accident. She's unconscious. She's rushed to a hospital. She's pulled into the hospital. They scan the thing. They've got all of her health information. They've got everything about her. It's wonderful technology, right? She's not even conscious. But we've got all of the permission papers. It's, everything's on file. Again, you walk into a bank. You don't have to pull out your identification. Yeah. Now you're banking. You're doing transactions. Another video over there is IBM. This one will scare you because it shows this guy in a store. It looks like he's a thief, right? And he's grabbing stuff and he's shoving it into his coat and whatever. And he goes walking out of the store without ever stopping at a register. But as he walks out, bingo, everything <laughs> is billed. All of it went yeah. into the system. <clears throat> he himself, his bank has the transactions already happened. It's been taken off of his credit card. And IBM is celebrating what a wonderful world of tomorrow we're going to have. Well. I guess, in some ways, maybe. But what concerns us is the book of Revelation and the book of prophecy and how we know that there is a system that is coming without which nobody will be allowed to buy or sell. So now we're talking, right, transactions, banking, uh, all of this kind of thing, but it won't happen unless you've received a mark. Well, I should quickly say there's another piece of technology that's coming uh, to uh, the market in 2014, and this is called the Proteus uh, Digital Pill. Uh, the company is Proteus Digital Health. They're one of the leading companies, and this is an edible microchip. Hmm. So you get up every morning when you're taking your vitamins, you swallow your Proteus Digital Pill. Your stomach acids not only eat away the outside covering, but also power the digital pill and it does everything that the flexible tattoo can do now you can bank you're authenticated is the term they use now they don't like to use that word identification you are authenticated mm -hmm. uh, for gives who you a little prestige yeah yes well isn't that the way that's called propaganda you give something a pleasant name and you can do anything well in speaking of names though why name it proteus uh, one, yeah. of, one of the things that i found and this is astonishing to me I found that fully about 35% of the leading biometric companies out there right now are naming themselves after ancient deities. Proteus, of course, was a shapeshifter that lived in right. the sea. Uh, but if you study the mythology around Proteus, he also had a talent. He could confuse the human mind, and if he took into a human form, he could mutate the living host. Now, what? I mean, does it make you feel comfortable yeah. to know that a company that's creating this technology has named itself after a, uh, what I, as a conservative Christian, would call a demonic entity that can mutate its host and confuse the human mind? Well, uh, Tom, that's just, con that's all coincidence. It is, co and it's yeah. an amazing coincidence. Another other words, one is named Kronos. Yeah. Uh, Kronos, the god to whom human sacrifices had to be made. So... Very astonishing to me that these companies would be picking these names like that. Uh, uh, it's a little bit disturbing. And I'm kidding when I say it's coincidence because it's not. These things are very carefully planned out. There are committees in large corporations that, that have the, their basic responsibility is uh, taxonomy. That is giving things good 
workable, viable, meaningful names. So somebody thought about Proteus before it was named. Right. Well, in any case, I'm, that's a little <laughs> bit of a side note, but it's a little bit of a disturbing side note. And you sometimes wish you could be a fly on the wall, right, in oh. some of those conversations. Yeah. But at a minimum, it might also imply that even if they themselves uh, mean you know, nothing negative by those uh, uh, names and titles, maybe there is something operating that they don't understand. Maybe there's a spiritual influence there that's been around for a very long time. Perhaps the most quoted scripture today is in Matthew twenty four thirty seven. <clears throat> but as the days of Noah were, so shall uh, it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, Go back and look at what was happening in Noah's day when God had to destroy the world. That's how bad it got. And what was happening then, <clears throat> and read Jude, read Second uh, Peter, there was an angelic encroachment into the affairs of men. And those angels were the people we now call <clears throat> Apollo, Proteus, Kronos, you know, Zeus, <clears throat> all of those uh, ancient mythological names are perhaps not as mythological as we'd like to think. And they are reasserting themselves in our era just as was prophesied. And a lot of people, Tom, have said that the technology we have today is technology that was Ill illegally obtained uh, through trafficking with alien uh, forces, which sounds a little bizarre, <clears throat> but it's been documented in a number of books. That is to say, uh, the creatures that are called alien today uh, th th that seem to be running around just behind the scenes. Uh, there has not been a full disclosure yet. People are waiting for that. But a lot of people, and, and not just people who study Bible prophecy, I'm talking about secular people now are saying that there has been a trafficking going on between uh, human agencies and aliens from behind the scenes. It's exactly what was happening prior to the flood in the days of Noah. So this beast tech you're talking about may be an illegal form of technology obtained from creatures on high, shall we say, the trafficking between human and alien uh, entities. Uh, and they would have a common interest, power and control, just as they did when they came before, back in the days of Noah. And there's also some similarities in the sense that when you look at a great deal of this technology, uh, Sharon Gilbert, uh, I like to give her credit. She has spoke at the Prophecy in the News conference, uh, and Sharon is qualified to talk about how, for instance, a, a living biochip would have the capacity to actually make RNN or RNA, whatever they call it, changes genetic modifications uh, to the body. Um, you not, might have noticed where recently DARPA has been advertising for the creation of a 47th chromosome. You might have saw the headlines, but you can still go to DARPA's website and look at their advertisement. And when you read what it is they're trying to accomplish, they want a way to be able to jack in to the human genetic makeup very quickly. Now, this would, from their point of view, this would have to do with biological warfare. You have soldiers on the field, <coughs> all of a sudden a biological yeah. agent is put on, and how can you rapidly create some way to defend them? Uh, well, this 47th chromosome would somehow give them this method. Is this wireless technology? Who knows? Because it hasn't yet been invented. But if you, gave, if you gave somebody another chromosome, would they be human? Well, they wouldn't be human as they were made by God. And there again, whether you're talking about a biochip that can change your genetic makeup, whether, whether you're talking about a smart vaccine that would actually alter your genetic makeup, um, and then using these to also both control and create identity systems does smack of what you're talking about, the days of Noah. Because once before there was a time when intelligence said, we can improve mankind. We can yeah. make them better than the version God made. But they had, a, uh, they had a reason. They wanted to extend themselves into those newly formed bodies. They wanted to leave their plane of existence and come down to the earth. This come under great judgment from God. Peter talks about it in the New Testament. John talks about it in the New Testament. There are apocryphal books of that era that record what was going on on the earth, but this, this, this came under great and immediate 
judgment from Almighty God. Now, if you're talking about this kind of technology, and of course the name of the book is Beast Tech, you're talking about a, an interactive system. Usually we talk about, say, a mark, something like a tattoo that you would glue to your arm or that would be invisibly applied to the back of your hand or your forehead or whatever. Uh, you're thinking of just a, a tattoo or a transmitter. But, but we're talking about something more than that. We're talking about an interactive mark that would actually change who you are. It would actually change who you are. It would integrate with your system. Like a virus, if, you, if a person wants to think of it that way, but a smart virus, one that's been engineered to accomplish a particular task. So wow. it's, going to re, it's going to reform, it's going to alter your genetic makeup, and if it altered you sufficiently. So for those people that watch this show that are scientifically minded, I'm not talking about what is called mutagenic effects, where you're living out here, maybe you're exposed to radiation and it mutates certain cells. I'm not talking right. about that. This literally is designed to permanently alter your genetic makeup sufficiently enough that in the purest sense of the word, you are no longer human. Now, some people today believe that that might be the way that the mark of the beast, uh, once received, alters people in such a way that they can no longer be redeemed. The book of Revelation seems to, to speak of that when it says that whosoever receives the mark of the beast, uh, they shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture out of the cup of his indignation. It just goes on and on forever, right? Yeah. What could you do to a human for which they can find no redemption unless they're no longer human? And again, this goes back to that ancient story because recall, according to some of the extra biblical texts, the book of Enoch in particular, right. which is still included in some people's, the orthodox versions of the Bible and whatever, uh, what, what did those... What did the watchers do? When God put a judgment on their creation, the Nephilim, the watchers, according to Enoch, went back and they pleaded with God for the salvation of, the, of their creation, the Nephilim. But it says there was no salvation right. for them. They cannot be redeemed. So that mu mutated form, even though it possessed a certain level of human, original genetic material, wasn't human and could not be saved. Well, you know, I think I know what one of the big topics is going to be at our late March Prophecy Summit in Orlando, <laughs> talking with Tom. This is one of the hottest topics you can possibly imagine. And by the way, I hope you join us there. Gary Stearman with a word about the upcoming Orlando Prophecy Summit, March 28th through 30th. It's going to be fabulous, Bob. It's going to be the Prophecy Conference for the Ages, 24 speakers in sunny Orlando, Florida. The Sunshine, The Beaches, Disney World, Universal Studios, The Holy Land Theme Park, and 24 incredible speakers. Like Chuck Missler, Bill Salas, L.A. Marzulli, and by the way, Mark Biltz. Don't forget Mark Biltz. Two weeks before the blood moons hit Israel, Mark Biltz is going to be speaking at our conference. L.A. Marzulli, fresh off his trip to Peru, his hunt for the skulls and the skeletons of the Nephilim. It's going to be fabulous. Bob, for our viewers in the southeastern United States, this is a one-day drive to a beautiful hotel, and we're going to have the most fabulous get-together you can possibly imagine. Be with us. Call the 800 number right now, 1-800-475-1111. We'll see you there. Tom, as I'm listening to you, what I'm hearing is the mark of the beast, which everybody's talked about now for decades, if not centuries, the mark of the beast actually has the potential of altering who you are as an individual, which would account for the scripture that says that once you receive the mark, it's all over for you. In other words, there's no salvation. I want to say too, in my opinion, it is very dangerous for anybody out there to be saying that people could receive the mark of the beast and still go to heaven. Here's primarily why I think that is very, very dangerous. I think that once a person has received the mark of the beast, they won't ever want to be redeemed. I think that it will change their brain chemistry. It'll change them in such a way that, again, go back to the original story. The watchers sought God for the redemption of their children. There is no record that any of the Nephilim ever tried to repent, ever tried. That's true. To, they, they, it wasn't them. It was their parentage, the fallen angels. 
Uh, so imagine now if something is created that so alters humans, they wouldn't even ask. And there's nothing in, the, by the way, there's nothing in the New Testament that yeah. tells us those who receive the mark of the beast are going to be crying out, please save me. And, right. you know, one of the names of the uh, Nephilim is the Rephaim, which is just an alternate name for basically a genetic mutant. And uh, Isaiah 26 says, they are dead, they shall not arise. In other words, there's no redemption for these genetically altered individuals. Exactly right. Now, another thing people are saying is, well, then, you know, if, if this thing comes along, I just won't accept it. Um, so... Uh, if the government came along, let's say, and say we came up with uh, a, 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 our own version of a Proteus digital pill or yeah. our own version <clears throat> of a chimeric vaccine, and uh, for the sake of the good of all the world, you're going to have to receive this thing, and it's the mark of the beast, and people say, well, then I just won't take it. But there's something, I think, that is uh, intriguing about the way the book of Revelation describes the kingdom of Antichrist when it says he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. How does he do that? How does he cause all? Um, in this uh, uh, program today, you're going to be telling people how they can get uh, free or in some package deal a three-hour presentation that Steve Quayle and I, it's just under three hours actually, Steve Quayle and I made not long ago. It's been a very, very well-received and hot uh, one of the most listened to radio shows yeah. ever. And I'm, I'm holding it right here. It's a three hour CD ROM, which we'll uh, mention later. Uh, conversation between Tom Horn and Steve Quayle. That has to be exciting. I, and I haven't heard this, but, but believe me, it's on my schedule. Well, it's been one of the top programs on the radio ever since we did it. And But the title of it is Trigger Event. And I took that title from this idea that the Antichrist is going to trigger something, he's going to do something. Uh, that is then going to cause all. One, very quickly if I can, uh, one of the scenarios, for instance, on that three-hour discussion is we talk about a pandemic, how that the World Health Organization, other laboratories in the world right now are very concerned that we could suddenly have a pandemic, a, 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 a bird flu type virus that somehow migrates into the human population. Just this week were the first two cases of the bird flu uh, transmitting from human to human. And this is one of the things the science community has been very concerned about. Yes. When you see that, that's a giant red flag, it right? Is. Okay, but let's just imagine in as few as words as Tom Horn can possibly <laughs> muster that suddenly a new black death arises, yeah. a <clears> pandemic. <throat> right. And it is so viral that within just a few months you've got hundreds of thousands of people around the world that are either dead or they are dying. Now we all know that an international cry would go up from the earth, from all over the earth, for a cure, for all of the great minds of the world to put their minds together and come up with a cure uh, before this thing basically obliterates population earth. And then all of a sudden a government, maybe the United States, comes forward and they say, we have a cure. Because this is a flu that migrated from animals to human, we have a chimeric vaccine. It is made up of both human and animal genetic material. We've created a vaccine around it. Uh, now, it will cure you of this disease, however, it will also permanently alter your genetic makeup. You will no longer be human, but if you don't take it, you're dead, <laughs> you're dead. in 10 days from now. Wow. So suddenly you have a scenario in which a trigger event sets in motion. You're not going to have just this blase, passive, all baloney, I'm not going to yeah. take it. Not when you're looking into the eyes of your dying children the eyes of your dying wife, or you yourself are dying, you've got to make a decision and fast. You know, I'm thinking of the pharmaceutical ads I'm seeing on TV today. They, uh, they tell you about this marvelous new pharmaceutical and how wonderful it is, and people are running around and smiling, and it's a beautiful day. And meanwhile, a voice in the background reads off a list of side effects, including sudden death. Right. And you say, wow, why would I ever take that? But you're talking about side effects, quote unquote, from something that has a purpose. Uh, what a marvelous uh, technique that would be to introduce a global change into society. You need to take this. Take this. It's good. Don't. Let's not talk about the side effects. Let's not talk about any of the, the other things that it will do to you. Well, uh, furthermore, uh, Gary, this technology, uh, when you look at how they would verify 
whether a person had received this chimeric vaccine, they scan your, the retina of your eye or the blood in the palm of your hand, and they can see the traces of whether or not you have received this chimeric wow. vaccine. So uh, in your head and hand, do you have the vaccine? If you don't, you're quarantined because you're a danger to the human population and you're simply going to die. So that's one of the numerous trigger events that Steve Quayle and I spent three hours discussing. Wow. The Proteus Digital Health Technology, MC10, other technology like that is in this book. We also talk about transhumanism and how the, the, you know, we've, we're entering now into what is called the hybrid age, uh, a human enhancement era in which everything from super soldiers to, to all this glorious, wonderful technology uh, I would have to say that I do believe there is some good things that are going to come out of biotech. And I'm not a technophobe. I'm not afraid of technology. Right. But when it's being combined with these intrusive civil liberty <laughs> stomping, uh, you know, then, then other bells start <clears throat> going off. The hidden agenda, so-called. Well, as always, when we talk with Tom Horn, we need three hours. We only have 30 minutes. Uh, the book is Beast Tech. And... Uh, I, I'm going to offer this book to you uh, as part of a package, which we're calling the Mark of the Beast package. Uh, we talked for a moment about uh, the uh, Tom Horn, Steve Quayle interview, three hours, CD-ROM. Listen to it in, in your, your uh, automotive uh, CD player. We have here the secret uh, Vatican Alien Antichrist connection. Now, this is a DVD, right? It is. It's, it's a little over one hour. That is the presentation that I made just a few weeks ago at the Strategic Perspectives Conference in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, a very large audience. They must have liked it because they gave me a standing ovation. Right? So that was a little... Wow. Yeah. Well, Tom, I've heard you speak, and it's always worth a standing ovation. Uh, uh, the book is Beast Tech. We've talked about the CD-ROM, the DVD, uh, for seventeen ninety five. It's a terrific package. We're calling it the Mark of the Beast package, and for a limited time, absolutely free, we're going to include Tom's great book, Petrus Romanus, absolutely free. <laughs> this would be about an $80 value for $17.95, the Mark of the Beast package. If you want to know more about what you heard Tom talking about in abbreviated fashion, Beast Tech is the book for you. Uh, the Steve Quayle conversation is worth the price of admission as far as I'm concerned. Having talked with Steve myself, the man bubbles over with information, right? I love doing radio with Steve Quayle. In fact, I'm down to almost the only guy I want to do radio with is Steve Quayle. Remember, the Mark of the Beast package. You've got the 800 number on your screen. And, Tom, we're fresh out of time. It's always such a pleasure talking with you uh, because you and I, uh, are on the same wavelength of, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our only hope. You have not received salvation uh, through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. His shed blood is, is redemptive power. It's your only hope for eternal life. And I just want to leave you with that thought. I know you agree, right? Absolutely, Gary. Thanks for having me on the program Tom, again. Thanks. thanks for being here. And, by the way, keep looking up, everybody. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported program made possible by our many friends around the world. Be sure you tune in every day for breaking news and our daily prophetic news updates at prophecyinthenews.com or follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash prophecyinthenews.